If you take away nothing else from this video, please trust me on this. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Allie and I love all things Disney and photography and coffee. So in my last video, I talked about which kind of camera would best suit you and your family on your Disney trip. So if you haven't watched that one, make sure you go and watch that one before you watch this one. Now, if you've watched that video and you have decided that a bigger camera like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera is something that you wanna to bring to Disney, then this video is for you. We'll cover everything you need to know from restrictions, equipment, and just general need to knows. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna talk about anything uh, particularly regarding to like flying with your camera or airport security or anything like that. I'm just to start from your time when you arrive at Disney. So the first thing to be aware of is that going to any of the parks in Walt Disney World or Disneyland, you will be required to go through security. Now, I believe the security processes between Walt Disney World and Disneyland vary slightly, but they do follow the same principles. In Walt Disney World, you will go through a metal detector and potentially, but not every time, you will get your bag checked. But over at Disneyland, I believe they are still doing it where you will go through a metal detector and every bag will additionally be checked. So if you are bringing a bigger camera like this to Walt Disney World, I can nearly guarantee you that every single time you will get pulled aside for your bag to be checked. These cameras are essentially just big metal objects and they will set off the metal detectors every time. So that's just something to be aware of, especially if you're traveling in a bigger party. The rest of your party may go through without having to get their bags checked, but if you are bringing a camera, likelihood is you will be. The other thing to keep in mind is while there aren't any inherent restrictions as to how much you can bring in terms of camera gear, but it just can raise their suspicion on whether or not you intend to engage in what they would consider commercial activity on Disney property, which is something that is prohibited. They just also wanna make sure that you're not going to inhibit um, the enjoyment or compromise the safety of other guests while you're there. If you're trying to set up tons and tons of camera equipment all over the park, that can just be a bit of a hindrance to other guests. But my husband and I have brought cameras to the parks before. We've each brought in one with extra lenses and we've never even gotten in question before, but it's just something to be aware of and always remember to be polite to Disney security as it's just their job to keep everybody safe at the parks. Now let's talk about some of the additional equipment that you may consider bringing. So the first one is probably the one that most people are aware of and that is the fact that selfie sticks are strictly prohibited across Disney property. Selfie sticks became really popular a few years back. Um, they're just extendable sticks, mostly for uh, your phone. So you can kind of hold it out and get like a big group selfie with everybody. They became quite a hindrance at Disney. People started uh, trying to use them like on the rides or just in situations where it was starting to get really unsafe. So if you do show up with one, uh, Disney security will confiscate it from you and hold it until you leave the parks because they are not allowed inside. Now, with that being said, um, I think a lot of people kind of lump together selfie sticks and tripods. And so when they hear that selfie sticks are not allowed in the parks, they automatically assume that tripods are not allowed either. And that's actually not true. Tripod are allowed at Disney and the Disney parks. There are just two uh, considerations that you do need to keep in mind. Uh, the first is that any tripod that you bring must be able to fit into a standard size backpack. Just meaning that when it's collapsed and folded up, you are able to fit it inside a bag. And then the second consideration is that the tripod itself cannot extend over six feet. And most of these uh, rules are just for the consideration of other guests. Um, bringing a tripod that big to the Disney parks, you're gonna be taking up a lot of space and that's just not considerate to other guests. And this also applies to monopods. So if you're not wanting to bring a whole tripod, but you're still wanting uh, something to help steady your camera throughout the day, monopods are allowed as well they just follow the same two uh, rules as tripods. Now, if you're concerned that your tripod may be too big for Disney, here's an example. So this is my husband's film tripod. As you can see, even folded up, it's about half my height. It's also incredibly heavy. Like I cannot imagine lugging this thing around the Disney parks. Like that would just not be fun. And then as you can see, fully extended, it goes well over six feet. So this is an example of the kind of tripod that would not be allowed at Disney. As long as you don't have one of these, which most of you probably don't, um, your tripod is probably gonna be fine. Now, just as an example of what would be allowed in the park, uh, this is our Manfrotto travel tripod. And as you can see, it compacts quite nicely. This would fit in a normal standard size backpack. It also does not extend over six feet, even fully extended out. So this one is an example of what would be okay. With the travel tripods, they also tend to be pretty lightweight, which makes them great for carrying around the park. Now, let's also talk about gimbals. 
So if you don't know what a gimbal is, it is essentially a stabilizer for your camera or even your phone. So that if you're filming or making a video, it'll help to keep the footage more smooth and less jerky. And many of the smaller ones, especially the phone gimbals can also double as a tripod. Technically, as of recording this, there is nothing on Disney's website that specifically says one way or another about gimbals. However, I do know there are several people out there that have brought uh, some of the smaller ones to the Disney parks without any issue. My general rule of thumb is as long as it's one of the smaller ones, more compact, for example, like the DJI OM6, uh, which is the one that I'm using here, those typically are fine, especially as long as you don't extend them out. But just keep in mind that Disney security will always have final say about whether something is or isn't allowed in the parks. Just something to keep in mind when you're going through security. Now let's talk about flash. So unless you are using one of the highest professional level cameras, there will be a flash built into your camera. There are also off camera flashes that you can purchase separately that give you a little bit more control as to the output of the amount of light emitted from the flash. In fact, you may notice if you're walking around the parks, the Disney photo pass photographers use off camera flashes. Now, as we all know, uh, flash is meant to give you just a big burst of light uh, to help your photos either in dark or nighttime situations. However, at the Disney parks, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. There are many rides and shows in which photography is perfectly fine. However, they may not allow flash, so you need to be aware of those instances. Most of the time, this is gonna pertain to the shows, and it's mainly so that the flash doesn't destroy distract the performers and that can be a safety hazard. You'll also just wanna be really considerate of the other guests. The flash on your camera can be really bright, especially um, at nighttime, if you're in close quarters, if your flash is constantly going off, that can be really inconsiderate to other people and that's just something you need to keep in mind. Now, of course, if you're bringing a bigger camera with you to Disney, you're gonna need something to carry it in. Um, at least to get it to Disney, to the park, especially if you're flying, um, you're gonna to wanna to pack it in something that can protect it. One of our favorites is this one here. This is the Peak Design travel sling. Um, it works really well for us. It can hold my camera with one lens attached, an additional loose lens. It also has several pockets for extra batteries, the charger, SD cards, and anything else I might need. For us, we really like this one because it's also a really great bag to bring to the park itself. It's small, but it can hold a lot. Because of all the extra pockets, it can also hold some of the extra things that we may need to bring to the parks, like phone chargers, tickets, anything else that we may need. But it's great for being able to put the camera away if we need to go on a ride or sit down to eat for a bit. And because it's designed to hold a camera, it's very protective. It's got a lot of padding on the inside. There are also many kind of backpacks that are available that have the same thing where they have like some built in protective storage for your camera, as well as some extra space if you need a little bit more than just like a sling. Something else to really consider is a camera strap, especially if you plan on prioritizing pictures and maybe you're not gonna ride a lot of the rides. So most cameras when you purchase them will come with a standard um, neck strap. If you take away nothing else from this video, please trust me on this. Buy yourself a shoulder strap. Uh, DSLR and mirrorless cameras can be very heavy and to have all of that weight isolated on your neck, I promise you by the end of day one, you will be miserable. So save yourself, get yourself a shoulder strap. So I have one here. This is actually a dual camera strap, so it can hold two cameras at once. Um, I've used this uh, mostly for photographing weddings. Um, and this brand, Coiro, uh, they make leather straps, highly recommend them. They're great quality, but they also have single straps that just go across your shoulder or there's plenty of other options on Amazon or Etsy all over the place. Just trust me, you're gonna want a shoulder strap over a neck strap. So one last thing that I wanna talk about is making sure that you balance taking photos, but also being in the moment. You don't wanna look back on your trip and realize that most of what you remember is you looking through your viewfinder. Make sure a few times throughout your trip that you actually put the camera down, even just for a few moments. Dance in the parade, hug Mickey Mouse, share a laugh with your family. Capture the moments, but don't forget to be a part of the moment. So bringing a DSLR or mirrorless camera to Disney is a great way to capture precious moments, but it's important to know the rules and restrictions and just those little things that you may not think of before you bring a camera like this to Disney. If you're curious about anything I may have mentioned throughout this video, I'll have everything linked in the description below for you. And be sure to subscribe for Disney vlogs, photography content, and much more. See you in the next video.